Hi, I'm Dr. Carl Stonesarf, and I'm a clinical associate professor of ophthalmology at the University of North Carolina. And today we're going to talk about topographic guided laser vision correction. What's new and what we're doing to try and achieve even better than normal vision. So our goal is simple. We want to make you see better than you did in your glasses or contact lenses. And we'd really like you to see even better if we could only correct you to 2020. And now getting 2012 and 2010 is an option and it's available to us. So what are our big challenges in our practice? What, what, what is a good choice for surgery? And for the sake of this, we're not gonna talk about dry eye. We're not gonna talk about people with irregular corneas. So we're really not anything but normal corneas in this example. Topographic guided laser has been around since around 2007. We stand on the shoulders of giants like Michael Morokin and T.O. Seiler and others. And basically, it is not pupil dependent. We can get large treatment areas because we can get larger diagnostics. It's unaffected by the lens. And we actually did a study to show this. We looked at the results of laser guided vision in the FDA trials. And with that, we showed that about two out of three people saw better than normal vision. And we kind of had this algorithm we followed after the FDA study, and it got harder and harder in the real world to figure out how we can make people see. And so we looked at this diagnostic tree. We actually saw that a large number of the patients with contour vision saw better than normal on the first postoperative day. So 81% were seeing better as early as the first postoperative day. But here's the most recent study that we really showed, even in the very, very abnormal asymmetric bow ties, not the people that we wouldn't operate on, but the people with more asymmetric bow ties or the more normal person you'd see in your clinic, which probably accounts for about 20 to 30% of your practice, we were actually getting better using this new engine software. Now, I don't want to denigrate what we did before, which is wavefront optimized. And so what we're going to try and go through is case series. When do we use topographic guided? Uh, do we just use uh, TCAP? When do we use wavefront optimized? The whole uh, thing is where we're headed. So TCAT is aligned on the vertex, whereas wavefront optimized is aligned on the pupil, and it's a great option. If we look at uncorrected post-op day one vision, and we publish this, we showed that four CDs, 2015 or better, as early as day one, and about 16% were seen in 2010. But the proof's in the pudding, and we showed this. The enhancement rates were less, and looking at about 2,000 plus cases, we had an enhancement rate of 0.29%. When we looked at the contralateral eye data, we looked at topographic manifest refraction, as well as TCAT alone, and we showed that this new software using topography actually did better in terms of the better than normal vision. So what about this new analytic engine we call Forcities? We're looking at the manifest astigmatism, the barrio astigmatism, the talus, and the lenticular astigmatism. So we're looking at the front and the back surface of the cornea as well as everything in between. And the nice thing about the software is when it says there's a problem, it says, don't use me. Go back to Wavefront Optimize, which is really nice. And when things don't match up, we don't have to be so worried about is how do we, you know, figure it out? What's the vector that we need to actually place this treatment on? And we published a series showing that, that we looked at these three different programming, programming methods and actually Forcities got better results as you see in this latest iteration that I presented at ESCRS in Paris last year. Now, Dr. Dan Dury and Dole Stolting showed that if we'll wait 12 months versus three months, that we can actually see more eyes at the 2010 level with topographic guided treatments. And that is really cool. And we showed that again in our series in terms of as time goes on, these patients get better and better and better as they learn how to look through their new optical system. And we published that as well. That recently came out. It was a four-site uh, study uh, that was led by Mark Lobanoff, and we showed that patients at the 2020 level for us were 100% with TCAT or with Forcities. But where 
four cities shined was at the 2015 or better level. So we can say now that we can plug these numbers into our system. We can not worry about whether you have a totally normal coronary, maybe have a little bit of an asymmetry and get great results at the 2015 or better level. When we compare them to Wavefront Optimize, again, we get a tighter comparison uh, than we do with Wavefront Optimize, but every now and then we have to resort to Wavefront Optimize treatments, and I don't think that's bad. When we look at astigmatism at the plus or minus a quarter level, uh, manifest TCAP, four cities, four cities tighter, and our R squareds are better. But what about in the real world? So when we look at these four cities case studies, you know, the easy ones, you know, they're a walk in the park when all the vectors are lining up and the axes are similar. These are the easy ones to treat. So we, those are what I call the really normal patients. But what about the ones like this 22 year old case number two? We're still using the same laser system. So I like to use a LASIK superior hinge. You see that on the left lower. It takes about nine seconds to make a flap. I lift that flap and under the laser, we're about 1.8 seconds per diopter of treatment. Uh, and, and the patients are tolerating this real well. So, you know, realistically, we're treating these patients in under five minutes uh, with both laser systems sitting side by side. So we lift back that flap. Here's an actual treatment time showing you from various angles. And this is a scanning spot laser. And then once we're done, we lay that flat back in place. And the patients will get up off the table, they'll see better, but it's really not till they've gone home and rested and these visions that we're talking about are on the first post-operative day. So the flap's placed in, and then we're on to the second one. So if we look at this patient of case two, we see that in the corner, it's showing that it's a minus 250. But when we look at the Vario data or the topographic data, it's showing this guy 1.33 dots of astigmatism. Well, do we treat that? Do we not treat it? And that's what this analytical engine called Forcities is helping us with. That was the right eye. This is the left eye. We're seeing similar things. And it's telling us what is lenticular astigmatism? What is the talus astigmatism? What is our treatment going to do in terms of outcomes? And it's given us a vectored recommended treatment. That looks at case three. Again, someone with higher levels of nearsightedness, a little uh, moderate to mild astigmatism. And again, we're seeing that as things are similar on the right eye, there's still enough variation but really on the left eye, you're seeing less astigmatism than what we got in our manifest. So again, we blame the lens, we blame the posterior cornea. How do we know which it is? We've got diagnostics to look at it, but with this new analytic software, it will give us a treatment profile and help us produce better vision, better outcomes without even having to worry about uh, what axis and what amount of astigmatism put in. So how do I think about these cases? Well, I don't have to work so hard anymore, okay? If somebody comes up, we plug the numbers in. On the right-hand side, you can see the manifest clinical. You can see the contour recommended treatment. And then you can see the anterior and posterior surface of the pentacam. And this is all done pretty much automatically on the laptop at the laser itself. Again, here's the other eye, same type of thing. We plug those numbers in and it gives us a treatment. So before with the FDA TCAT, we were really looking at normal corneas. We actually screen for normal corneas. And with this new analytic engine, we're getting better outcomes. And again, I wanna say it over and over again, Wavefront Optimize works well at the 2020 level. But if we wanna to get to the 2010 level, this is where we're at. And last but not least, the most important part is I now have three people who have achieved 20 slash eight level. And I think that's really neat. Thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for your attention.